Shalom, Chavari, I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, friends, I wanted to just speak to you just a moment, uh, of course, about things going on, and also let you know that over on Patreon, we did load a very lengthy broadcast today. Uh, it is a screen-recorded broadcast, so uh, you'll be able to see the screen, what we were showing there. I had to do it in a very low quality because of the way the information that we're trying to upload, and of course, so much information in a short period of time. But there's one thing that, that has been quoted a lot to me, and that's the passage from Ezekiel 7.19, referring, a lot of people refer this to the last days here. And I do believe, believe it's a cyclical event, but this is actually something that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Once again, another one of these prophecies is fulfilled years ago. Uh, it says, They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Uh, their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. I do believe that there is a cyclical event in the fulfilling of this passage right here. But just to back up to verse 12, The time has come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return that which is sold, although they were yet alive. Uh, for the vision is touching uh, the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. Now, it seems very evident to me that they're referring to the temple sacrificial service as they did. They bought and sold in the temple. And as you remember, Jesus overthrew the, the, the tables of the money changers and said, my father's house is a house of prayer and you've made it a den of thieves. It goes on to say that the sword is without and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. Again, just like it was when uh, Titus besieged the city, those that were outside the city, of course, they died in battle, but on the inside, pestilence. Why? Because they were locked in. They were killing each other even, eating their own children. And, of course, disease set in. The more, the worse things got because of never surrendering to the Romans. All hands shall be feeble. All knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces and baldness upon all their heads. This was what happened to Israel 2,000 years ago. The house of Judah and their rejection of Christ. That's exactly what happened. And yes, they shall cast their silver in the streets. Their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. And the same thing is going to happen once again. It's not going to be able to deliver them. All right, But I wanted to share some thoughts here with you, though, because there's still some yet some other things I'm looking at, especially in light of what we are dealing with today. Uh, we are truly living a biblical time from what I'm seeing and, uh, and, and cannot even begin to express just how biblical we are, we are living in right now. Looking over at Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, and again, this is talking about the beast kingdom, the beast system that is rising right before our eyes. And as I'm looking at uh, a, a, a very realistic possibility of a forced vaccination, uh, Bill Gates talking about a monitoring uh, program, the 2020 agenda there. And you can't help but wonder, is there going to be some sort of implant? And obviously, there are those that are saying, you know, unless you have the vaccination, you're, you can't, you're not going to be able to participate in the economic system. So I kind of keep those thoughts in mind. I don't say emphatically it is the mark of the beast, uh, but there are some interesting uh, attributes to that as well. But I just want to remind you of what the scripture says, Revelation 13, 12. And he exercised all power of the first beast before him. All right. Now, the first beast was the one that Yeshua, Jesus himself, all right, he dealt with the first beast kingdom. And that's when he exposed, he wounded the head of the serpent when he exposed the Pharisaic order and who they really were. And this scripture says that he exercised all the power as he as did the first beast. Now, let's just kind of let me back up just a little bit on this here. And uh, 
so that we can see. There's a little bit more I want to share with you on this. And again, I apologize. We're really kind of backed up here. I behold another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The dragon, of course, we know as Satan, right? And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That's the Pharisaic order rising to global dominance. All right, but what was, we have to go back in scripture and notice what the power of the Pharisees wielded way back when. All right, Rome kind of controlled everything, but if you recall, a fascinating point here is that one, the people were afraid to believe Jesus because what? They would be kicked out of the synagogue. People that stand for Jesus today are afraid of the Pharisaic uh, push that is going on right now under these leading messianic rabbis that are trying to put you under Pharisaic uh, uh, rabbis of today. And people are so afraid... Right? And, and not only that, they had so much power that even Caesar yielded to the Pharisaic order when they wanted to put Jesus to death. And they said to, to Caesar, if you do not, you know, if, in other words, if you don't put him to death, then you're no friend of Caesar. Or excuse me, Pilate. They said it to Pilate. Said it because uh, Pilate was the Roman governor. All right, that was put into the land there. But they had so much power over the Roman governor that the governor obeyed the command of the Pharisees to put Christ to death. What do you think they're going to do to you then? It doesn't matter what governor of what country, what state it is, where in the world. They exercise so much power of the first beast that they will tell you, regardless, even if Rome itself, the Catholic Church, for example, is ruling the world governments, they will tell those governors, you're no friend if you don't obey and put these believers to death. Think about what time we're living in, friends, all right? So it goes on to say, He actually all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And that's exactly what we see today. There is a major push amongst messianic teachers and even evangelicals that the, that the law is going to come out of Jerusalem and therefore what the sages taught 2,000 years ago, Pharisees, is what we have to be under. All right, notice that now. See, and he exercised power before him, causes the earth and them to dwell there and to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonder, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. All right? And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Everything is about lifting up Judaism of 2,000 years ago, just like the land of Israel. Today, it's all about... Well, this, is our, this was the land of our ancestors. Yes, but according to the word of God, it was your land at a time as long as you kept God's word. You didn't keep it, and when you didn't keep it, our forefathers were driven out of it. When the Mashiach did come, when the Messiah did come, we rejected him, our forefathers rejected him, and we were driven out as a result of it. Just like I said, Ezekiel 7, uh, chapter 7 was already fulfilled 2,000 years ago. All right, so we go on. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. All right, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. In their foreheads. See, he causes it. See? And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So if you're a Pharisee, you don't need a mark. You don't have to take the vaccine. And I'm not saying that the vaccine is it. I'm just giving you examples here, right? Uh, 
Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Okay? So that's just to kind of give you some thought there. And I, again, I do not know for sure if this mark is going to be part of that new system or not. But I'm telling you, something very sinister is in the works. I'm Stephen Vernon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening in.